Hello, everybody. I'm Kirsten with Ambler Nutrition and Center on the Hill. We're going to talk about diabetes nutrition today. And today, I just wanted to get everybody online started. Um, it's so good to see everybody. We have six people already. There's supposed to be um, 10 and some people on a wait waiting list. So I hope everything's everybody's okay. We got our um, meal plannings that we're going to talk about today. And um, just so you know, when you come in, there's a little water um, cooler and you can get a, they have a cup. And if you want to have a drink of water when you come. So, um, so COVID is tough. We have to take care of ourselves, eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, have a, a, lentils are a great source of zinc. Zinc and animal meat is also an animal meat. Um, zinc also helps you, you um, avoid viruses and get strong. And then also vitamin A. So vitamin A and squash, um, lots of vitamin A and spinach and dark greens too. So looking at zinc and vitamin A, those are the things, those are the nutrients that make our cell walls most resistant to viruses and infection and that kind of thing. Um, so, so let's talk about food. Um, the first week of every, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm away from the thing. The first week of every month, we talk about just general diabetes and um, you know having insulin receptors and moving around brings the insulin receptors to the surface of the cells. Um, you're, uh, you eat something, you get high blood sugar, um, and then the pancreas realizes this and sends some insulin. The insulin can open those uh, insulin receptors, those doors, and then the sugar can go from your bloodstream into your cells. That's the beauty. You can get the, the cells, get the nutrients and the bloodstream doesn't have too much sugar in it. Too much sugar in your bloodstream causes all kinds of um, comorbidities, they call them, whether it's kidney disease, strokes, heart disease, you know, numbness, uh, tingling, nerve damage. You, you all know about um, having excess blood sugar for a long time. Everyone is going to have high blood sugar 15 minutes after they eat. That's the beauty of eating. But then um, with uh, the insulin receptors and the insulin, the sugar can leave, the big molecule of sugar can leave the bloodstream and get into the cells. Um, magnesium, calcium, sodium, all of these things are very small molecules and they can go right between the cells of the bloodstream vessels into the cell walls. So they can go right, you know, flow, you know, as you need them. Um, water is also very small, but not sugar. Sugar is huge and it's spiky and it can't get from the bloodstream to the, into the cell walls unless there's these insulin receptors that can open this big door so a big molecule can get into the, the cell. So. A lot of people that I've talked to who have diabetes for years didn't really understand how insulin works. So without insulin, our cells don't get the sugar that they need. And I'm saying sugar, it could be glucose, um, but it is that um, CHO molecule that is very big. And um, okay, so we talked about a little bit about what diabetes is. Diabetes is the biggest thing is either, it's, it's, it's many different ways, but the main two ways are your liver is giving your bloodstream too much sugar. So when you eat food, and you have high blood sugar, um, the liver saves some of it. Because when you're at night sleeping, um, you're not eating and your brain and your lungs, and your heart still need nutrients. So the liver will give you some nutrients. Uh, metformin makes sure that the liver only gives what you're supposed to get, not excess. Other people with diabetes, they will have their liver constantly giving them too much sugar all day long. So metformin is a medication that, that cuts it back, but still lets a little bit of sugar. So if you have high blood sugar, do not take metformin. It's not going to do anything for you because it's uh, too late. So um, the other um, medicine is insulin. There's other ways that we could get insulin, but um, basically, especially with type one, you know, your body, the way that they have diabetes is that their pancreas just doesn't give enough insulin. Okay. So that's the generic of how diabetes is. You can either have it from your pancreas, not giving you enough insulin or your liver giving you too much sugar. And either way you end up with, if the insulin isn't there and you ate something, you have high blood sugar in your bloodstream. There's really no way for it to get out of your bloodstream. There is, there's several ways and there's eight different classes of medicines to fix that up. But insulin, our natural insulin from pan our pancreas is the, is the best way. Okay, so that was the diabetes section of it. Today, we're going to be talking about meal planning. And I have this, um, these, are these are conversation maps. And um, back, um, you know, the past two years when we were getting together in person in the smaller room, you're only supposed to have four to six people and you...
18 people. So 18 people can't be around this map. So I put it up on the wall. But now there's only six of us. So it would be great to sit at one table and the six of us go over it. But with um, the COVID restrictions, we have to be like 10 feet apart. So that's why I have it posted here. But um, generally, these maps are meant to go onto a table. I, I don't know if I mentioned that before, but I feel kind of guilty having it like a lecture because we're not supposed to be lecturing you. But but I, I appreciate your questions. And because we have a few people online, um, I'm gonna repeat your questions so that we can hear it. And then you can tell your friends that today's Wednesday, tomorrow afternoon, this will be posted and edited <laughs> so that they can see it in like, I don't know, 45 minutes or not a whole hour. It's, it's much, they cut out all the jibber jabber. <laughs> so, um, so we're gonna go around this little neighborhood here and we're gonna start here. There's people sitting at a picnic table having um, a nice uh, picnic lunch with a little party. And then um, there's an ice cream guy comes and then there's this grumpy guy here. And he's very disappointed because he thinks when you have diabetes, you can't have any sweets. And that is not true. So do you remember, we had talked about this earlier about um, how you can have uh, sweets. They're carbohydrates. And it's just one of the four food groups. Um, does anybody remember the other, besides carbohydrates, do you remember the other groups that you want to have? And you, what'd you say? Protein. Yep, carbohydrates and protein. What's another one? Fruits yep, fruits and vegetables have the fiber. So that's the carbohydrates and the fiber. And the protein always comes with what? Do you remember? Like the chicken skin or the, the fat. That's right. So the, the four food groups are the carbohydrates and the fiber and the proteins and the fat. And the carbohydrates and the fiber go together, whether you're having whole grains or you're having fruits or vegetables. And the proteins and the fat usually go together, whether you're having beans or you're having chicken or you're having nuts. And there's always a little bit of that. But those, that is the way that um, our body can absorb um, the excess carbohydrates uh, or any carbohydrates um, slowly. The key is about the four food groups, the carbohydrates are digested really quickly really quickly. So um, I don't know if you've ever been hungry and then you had some, I don't know, cotton candy or some, some candy that gives you a buzz within 15 minutes. That's how fast those carbohydrates um, um, can increase your blood sugar. So if you're looking for something that has candy, uh, look at like something that has nuts or peanuts in it, because then it will have some protein and fat uh, in with the carbohydrates and it slows things down. If you can have you know, a meal like chicken and broccoli or some kind of a protein and a vegetable, um, then you will have the fats, the proteins and the fiber. And then the simple carbs, like if you have ice cream for dessert, it can't get through to your um, bloodstream so fast because the fats, the proteins and the fiber are in the way. Basically, if you were to have an, an apple or an orange, like those little halos with nothing in your stomach, there is a little bit of fiber in there, but, but it goes right through your stomach into your bloodstream. So that's why I'm saying if you're going to have a carbohydrate, if you're going to have some, um, some potato chips or some pretzels or some, some popsicles or ice cream or something, make sure you have a meal first because then the carbohydrates can't get through so quickly. So he's, he's very disappointed, but somebody needs to have him come to my class and say, hey, you can have carbohydrates when you have a meal. So these people are having their meal and then they're having their, their dessert. Um, the only time when you would want to have a carbohydrate, this is whether you have diabetes or not, uh, just a straight carbohydrate would be before you're gonna do some big physical activity. Like if you know you're gonna spend an hour at the gym, that's when you would have you know, a fruit smoothie without any protein in it or um, you know, a granola bar. You know, Those are basically candy if you wanted to have candy. I know the, I went to Drexel and Drexel's big with sports nutrition. So they were having like the soccer players have a handful of jelly beans before they go out to the field. You know, these guys can run all over the field on a handful of jelly beans. So, and then afterwards, after you've done your workout, that's when you would have the protein. If you have um, protein before your workout, your body has to convert that protein and fat and all that into a carbohydrate so that you can use it. Um, you know, for your activity. So whether you're um, about to go to the gym or if you're gonna go um, gardening, um, I just spent an hour and a half this morning raking leaves. I absolutely should have had a, a little more fruit before I started that. I was wiped out when I was finished, but um, still feeling a little warm. But yeah, carbohydrates are great before a big activity. If you're going on a hike, you know, definitely have, a, what could you have? I, you know, oatmeal, granola bar, something in the morning and then bring granola bars and things or something, uh, you know, 
whatever a, a carbohydrate snack that you like, whether it's bananas or fruit or, you know, the nut mix, the nut mix is a little more protein, but you need the energy. And then when you come back, your muscles have been uh, worn through and you want to replace the glycogen and you also want to replace the muscle fiber. And that's when you can build muscles is after your workout, um, not during, which kind of you'd think that, oh, while you're you know using the machines or while you're raking, you think that your muscles would be building, but they actually get torn down. And then it, when you have a rest and you have your water, um, that's when you'd want to have the protein shake or you know, a hearty breakfast with eggs and sausages and things, but just have the fruit and stuff and cereal before you start. So he doesn't have to be disappointed. You can have the ice cream. The thing is you would have the meal and you would skip the starch out of there. If you know ice cream is coming or you're at a party, you're gonna have some cake, then you're not gonna have the bread and the potatoes and things. You're gonna have more of the meats and the vegetables. And then you have um, all of those are in your stomach and then have your uh, dessert right away. Now, Thanksgiving wise, and a lot of big meal wise, we always think, oh, you have your big meal, you wait an hour or so, go for a walk, and then you have the dessert. That just keeps the high blood sugar that you had during the meal extended. So um, you, and you have to wait another two hours after that dessert. I found that um, uh, whether you have diabetes or not, you have your big meal, and then you have your dessert right after. And then that is the meal that gets digested. And with the in two hours of starting that meal, your blood sugar will be back to normal. But like I said, if you wait that hour, now you've just extended it another hour that your blood sugar will be elevated. And you know what you feel like when you ate too much, it's not comfy. <laughs> you know, you want to take a nap, you're just, it's, it's exhausting. So um, Thanksgiving, we're all looking forward to it, but we're all going to have small meals. We're gonna, I think at Giant, they're going to have the tiny turkeys or they're going to be sold out of them on that week. So if you go to a Giant or shop right, or go and get your turkey now, you know, try to get your tiny turkey early before they sell out. Because I can't imagine my husband and I taking a 22 pound turkey now. I don't know what we would do with it. So I think you can also donate your turkeys. So something to think about. Um, okay, so we're talking about the food groups and having the carbohydrates last. So if you have a Chinese food, try to have the chicken and the broccoli a little bit first and then have the rice later. Don't start out with the rice. Don't start out with the lo mein noodles. Those are the simple carbs. And then you're, well, you know, they put sugar in those sauces. So um, your sugar is elevated that whole time. But, um, you know, Indian food, all the ethnic foods, um, they're delightful with all their vegetables and their spices. These are all really highly nutritious foods. It's when you get into the excess portion of rice and noodles, you're looking for about a half a cup with a half a cup of chicken and then two cups or, you know, a cup or two of the vegetables. So you really want to have more than half your plate be um, the, whether it's the snow peas or the broccoli or the peppers or the onions and the mushrooms and beets, all these kind of things. We, we love the vegetables. It does really good things for your bodies. Um, over here, we have um, a potluck. And, you know, a lot of people want to bring their favorite dish. So a lot of the potluck dishes are going to be not as healthy as what you would expect. So when you do go to a potluck and you bring something, try to bring something that you know you can have that is not so much uh, carbohydrates. It's going to be more of a you know, squash with a ground beef and some red sauce or, you know, different kinds of, um, uh, of foods that are not going to be high carb, like a mac and cheese would be, or um, the potato salad, because, you know, the people want to bring those and we don't want to eat those. Um, you know, just watch out for the, the potluck. If you're going to bring something, bring something that, you know, you can enjoy. And I will bet there being a lot of people there who are going to be happy you brought it. A broccoli salad, something that has a lot of vegetables in it. Um, yeah, even a shrimp platter, you know, again, that's not going to be a lot of carbohydrates, um, but that is going to be expensive. So make sure that, you know, if you're going to do that. Um, let's see. The main reason I'm talking about vegetables so much is because in our stomach and our intestines and, you know, our, our gut is uh, these bugs, um, it's bacteria, and it's really good for us. We thought that having a good gut biome is um, helps with your poop schedule. It's so much more than the bathroom. Now they're finding it affects our mood. It affects our sleep. It gives us a clear brain. It reduces our cholesterol. It really, these bugs help balance our bodies and they, they do really well with the fiber and vegetables. Those, the, they just feed the bugs and whether it's vegetables or whole grains, you know, barley now we're putting barley in soups and well, actually the last week it's been in the seventies. So we're back to BLTs and, you know, grilled vegetables and sausages and stuff like that. 
but um you know maintaining a certain amount of vegetables every day is really important and with vegetables um, they have a lot of nutrients and not a lot of carbohydrates so i'll count berries as that so whether it's cherries or um, blueberries or blackberries or um, raspberries um some a lot of people now have diverticulitis so they're worried about the seeds so it would be more the blueberries and the cherries as opposed to the raspberries and the blackberries because they're going to have a lot of seeds in them but um, do what you do for yourself, but just know that, um, you know, berries are just little bombs of nutrition, tons of nutrients, hardly any carbs, lots of fiber um, and, and the skin and all of that kind of thing. They're really wonderful. So we talked about the food groups. We talked about having um, the carbohydrates um, after you've eaten a few bites of your protein and your vegetables. Um, then we're talking about meal planning. So, sure. Yeah, you mentioned barley. Yes. It is. So barley is, um, there was a question about what barley is, and barley is a carbohydrate, um, but it is a whole grain, like um, the old-fashioned oats, or the brown rice, or the quinoa. All of these are whole grain oats. There's a lot of fiber in there, and uh, the germ, and they also have a lot of vitamin B, um, and they do have some protein in them. So not so much. Uh, and a half a cup is about four grams. And people don't generally need between 10 and 20 grams of protein. If you're a bigger person, you need 20 grams per meal. If you're a smaller person, you only need 10. But between all of us here, we probably need about 15 grams of protein. So four grams of protein and a half a cup of barley or oatmeal or whatever, it isn't very much. So we want to add some more protein to it. Mm -hmm. So if we take barley or rice or noodles, barley would be the best thing. Um, yeah, when trying to figure out the best choice of a whole grain carbohydrate, um, whether it's a barley or brown rice or um, the, the noodles or the white rice, the noodles and the white rice are more refined. They don't have as much fiber with them, so they're not going to be as good a choice. They're going to bring your sugar up fast like jelly does. But the rice and the barley, the brown rice and the barley and the quinoa, um, they are going to in the whole you know, old fashioned oats, steel cut oats, steel cut oats take 45 minutes. I don't know. I'm not a fan. I'm, I am I got to be fast, but those are all more um, complex carbohydrates and they take longer to digest. And again, they give you the fiber that those bugs really need. So it, try to put them into your salads, put them into your soups. Um, some people just put the ground flaxseed. I mean, that's another fiber. Um, it has a little bit of omega-3 in it, but um, yeah, a tablespoon of flaxseed into your smoothie or um, into your granola or into your uh, oatmeal, that can bump up the fiber and again, feed those bugs in our, in our bellies. That's a good question, thank you. So um, we're talking about meal planning. Um, going to the grocery store, you know that uh, half your cart is gonna be vegetables and the fresh vegetables are great, but between you and me, the broccoli I have ideas for and I'm shopping on say a Tuesday night, I'm gonna have it on a Wednesday, something happens. I don't have it in the Thursday. Oh my gosh, it's Monday again. I haven't had the broccoli and it's turned yellow. So take a look at the frozen vegetables. Um, they're very good. They're taking the freezer trucks out into the fields now. It's not like what it was, you know, two to five years ago. Um, I make a broccoli salad that's crunchy with the frozen broccoli. I can't believe this stuff. So um, I do think you have to, now I, I'm trying to think, I did get a bag of broccoli and it was soggy. And I think it was either the store brand at Giant or at Aldi's, but it might say um, fresh frozen or something like that, uh, flash frozen. And then you know that it's gonna be pretty much raw when you take it out of the microwave after a minute. So um, yeah, whether it's um, broccoli or onions and peppers, who wants to chop up all those onions? You can get them frozen and peppers are so expensive. You just get a bag of peppers, you know, it's already chopped up and they're frozen and I don't know, $1.50, $2, you know, those packets of peppers are like four or $5. So, and you don't have to chop them. You don't have to take the seeds out and all that kind of thing. And they don't go bad because they're in the freezer. Um, asparagus doesn't do so well. I have yet to have a good frozen asparagus, but asparagus is really a springtime plant. Um, how many of you do not like asparagus? Just so, yeah, just so you know, that fiber, um, when you have an asparagus top or stalk and you have the top of the asparagus and you have the white bottom, if you bend it between the white and the green, it will snap where the fiber ends. So when, so when I get a, a bunch of, of asparagus, I'll set it on my um, board, I'll rinse it off, I put it on my board, and then I just, uh, I start and I just snap all those ends. If it's still green, it'll only be the half 
inch of an end and it'll it'll snap and break but that way i don't get that fiber that you get at the end of i know we're talking about we want fiber yeah i don't like fiber in my mouth <laughs> when, with asparagus on the bottom of the asparagus and it's all stringy and everything but yeah so you just snap every single one of those it's fast I, I line up the tops with my knife and then i just cut off all those irregular parts and i cut them all up put them in the pan boil them for like four minutes fantastic you know there's all different kinds of nor sauces and different sauces you can put on it if you don't like it just plain um, but it's also wonderful with any kind of fish dish and you know have your grain um, any kind of grilled vegetables whether it's um, you can also grill your asparagus oh actually last week we gave a page oh i don't have it this week but for the the meal planning definitely plan your meals around your vegetables if you can do that and add chicken or fish, hoop, pork, whatever you want, um, that's fine. I, I'll tell you that I am leaning, uh, uh, there's so much fantastic research out there about a plant-based diet. Again, you're gonna pick your meal um, around whatever vegetables. You know, if you wanna have, okay, tonight we're gonna have a grilled night because it's gonna be warm, maybe it is. You pick out what vegetables you're gonna grill and the zucchini and mushrooms and um, onions and peppers, they go great together on the grill. Other times I'm going to do more of an Indian dish. Okay, so I know that um, potatoes are in uh, maybe small potatoes, but um, butternut squash and cauliflower and peas, they go really good in a curry. And you think about your Asian food. Okay, I'm going to do a stir fry. So I'm going to have the snow peas and the broccoli, maybe a can of uh, water chestnuts or baby corn. You know, so do you see what I'm saying about you're picking your meals around your vegetables? And you can add anything to that, whether it's going to be some grilled chicken. Grilled chicken works on all three of those recipes. Um, even if you want to do some um, beef or some pork, um, they work in all three of those recipes. But the big thing is, the animal protein, if you wanna mix it up and give your pancreas a little break, um, the animal protein makes your pancreas have to give five different enzymes where when you have a plant-based protein, whether it's beans or if you're gonna do the seasoned tea, tofu that's already you know marinated and baked, it's brown, or if you wanna do one of the um, Beyond Meat sausages or the Impossible Burger, these are all plant-based proteins. All your pancreas has to do is give a little bit of insulin. So it really gives your pancreas a break. If we can work on having um, these uh, plant-based proteins in our diet, you know, a, a couple times a week, you know, the more the better. Uh, and if you wanted to have some fish and chicken and stuff on the other, other times, you just want to reduce how much fat is in them. The biggest thing, unfortunately, and it was, well, I don't know, with the quarantine, we've been able to do a lot more research than they're figuring out every day, something new about um, diabetes and just how our body works. When we have... Um, uh, excess oil in our diet. So you had a pasta with um, a pesto sauce on it and it's made with a lot of olive oil. That oil goes into our stomach and it goes into our bloodstream. And it, the first place it goes is into the insulin receptors. So then the insulin receptors can't take the insulin and you end up, whether you have diabetes or not, with a higher blood sugar. And then the liver notices that, turns it into fat. Because you know, our body saves every nutrient that we eat it, you know, they want to save our lives. So um, think about um, reducing how much fat we need. Now, back in the 80s and 90s, 2000, it was all about um, a low fat diet, remember? And there was all these fat-free products and things. They found out in the 2000s, early 2000s, a lot of brain problems, a lot of joint problems, skin problems. So um, we, we do need a little bit of fat, but not too much. Um, having no fat is a problem, but having excess fat, it does cause our liver to give us more fat in our bodies, excess body fat. So um, they said we need anywhere from two to four tablespoons. So if you are a bigger person, you're going to need more like four tablespoons a day. Other people who are smaller are going to need two tablespoons a day. And four tablespoons is like a quarter cup of walnuts. So do you have a question, Anne? Yeah, coconut oil. Absolutely. I had a question about coconut oil. So coconut oil, it comes from a plant. So you think it'd be like olive oil. It is so saturated. You can't believe this. Like if you had a tub of lard, you know, beef fat, it's only about 40% uh, saturated, maybe 50%. If you had a tub of butter, it's like 70, 70 or 80% saturated. That coconut oil is hundred, like 95% saturated. So who knew that these little coconuts would do so much? The saturated fat goes into our body and helps us make um, cholesterol. 
And cholesterol is the base of our hormones. So we need some cholesterol, but this, this uh, saturated fat really does the LDL cholesterol. And the LDL cholesterol um, floats through our bloodstream and wherever the, our arteries or uh, veins have um, been worn away the, and, and maybe there's some leakage and stuff, the LDL cholesterol will patch it. It's very sticky. And in a regular amount, um, it, it keeps our, our veins you know, sealed. And then the HDL is very slippery. It goes on top of that sticky H, um, LDL and then our blood can flow very fast. When our heart beats, our toes get blood. I mean, our, the inside of our vessels are really slippery. That HDL is amazing. But the LDL, whenever there's something that needs to be patched, we wanna watch out for that. And because of that, it's so sticky. Yes, it can get um, different parts of our, the way that the, the bloodstream is. We might have you know curves and corners and things. And sometimes that LDL can um, accumulate there and then different plaques. Um, vitamin K causes our body to make a scab, let's just say. There's some other plaques in our, in our bloodstream. It sticks to the um, LDL cholesterol that, and then you end up with some blockages and then you end up with some, the blockages get free and then the little pieces go and you end up with a stroke. This is bad news. Today we're talking about food. So we don't wanna eat too much saturated fat and the saturated fat always comes from animals plus coconut. Um, there is some in, there's some information about palm oil. Um, there's a couple things. So we're not sure that palm oil is that healthy for us. Um, same thing with canola oil. And also the palm oil, often where we get it, um, it it's not good for the environment. It just takes the trees down and that kind of thing. So you want to limit the coconut oil and the palm oil. What did you say about olive oil? So olive oil is fantastic. Uh, they had a question about olive oil. Olive, <laughs> this is... Yeah, so olive oil, all the oils that we um, eat, like we eat peanuts, we eat walnuts, we eat avocados, uh, olives, all of these oils are um, really good for us. Um, again, four tablespoons at the most per day. So you just want like a teaspoon in your fry pan. But olive oil comes in two kinds of ways. One, it's really expensive and dark green. And the other one is refined and it's almost clear. That refined one is great for, for uh, sauteing vegetables and things like that because it can take the heat. But the green one, save that for when you're doing salads and something cold because um, it has little olive bits in it. That's why it's green. And you know it makes things smell like olives and it's a very low smoke point. So what you can uh, start sauteing with the dark oil, it'll start smoking right away. Virgin, virgin is the dark one. Yeah, the virgin has little bits of olive in it. And, it's great in, in salads and pestos and, and you know different sauces and things, but um, not, not too much because again, it, where's the first place it goes? Our insulin receptors, why? We love oils, you know? Uh, anyway, so um, that's my big disappointment that we got to cut back on the olive oil because um, it really increases our, our blood sugar, whether you have diabetes or you don't. Okay, so the grocery store, we're talking about um, planning our meals around the vegetables. Um, we're talking about also trying some uh, meatless meals, whether it's a vegetarian chili, you can make um, a big pot of it, maybe it's eight servings, and put them in little sandwich bags in the freezer, then you can use it for tacos one night, you can have it on a salad, like a taco salad, you can put it in red sauce, you can make sloppy joes, there's all kinds of things that you can do with it. So think about doing a, you know, a vegetarian uh, chili that you can pull from quickly. Um, same thing with um, the breakfast sausage. Um, I love sausage, I'll just tell you. <laughs> and the Gimme Lee or the Jimmy Dean sausage where it comes in a plastic tube and you have to take the thing off and you slice it up. Now they've made a plant-based version of it that's really good. It's called, it's from Light Life and it's called Gimme Lean instead of Jimmy Dean, Gimme Lean. And again, it's um, if you cut it into eights, you get two pieces. So it's a four servings for the whole thing, Gimme Lean. and. You know, uh, a breakfast hash is amazing. So the big thing is carbohydrates, right? We, we, the gimme lean sausage, I think maybe has one gram of fat in it. So it's nothing like the regular sausage, but it tastes and it has a texture just like regular sausage. And you would saute up onions and uh, peppers, like frozen peppers and frozen onions, um, get them in the frying pan, a little bit of oil, a little tiny bit, 
they'll make their own juices. And once um, they get going and they start to turn brown, then there's plenty of juice in there. I might add another teaspoon of oil and then put the sausages in that and get them going. And then um, pep when maybe a potato from last night, just one cup in that whole big pan. Or maybe um, I'll do one a potato and I dice it up really small and put it in boiling water while I'm doing this so that it's partially cooked. I put that in there so it starts to get those brown edges, you know, on the potato is so yummy. And then just before everything is done, I'll put some spinach in there or some kale or some cabbage or whatever green that you have. And you mix that all up. Boy, is that yummy. And it freezes great. And then in the morning, you're like, oh, what am I going to have for breakfast? Oh, I have sausage potato hash. It is, it's, it's just so delightful. So Again, with, um, you know, I have lots of recipes. You guys can call me. I think a lot of you I've seen. So um, yeah, I've been doing a lot more with the recipes, but oh, so warm. Um, so we got our grocery, our, um, you know, planning around the vegetables, looking at having some uh, meatless meals. Um, I, but if you're gonna have um, chicken or, or beef and stuff, just know that the fat is what is causing us to gain weight. So if you wanna lose weight or you wanna, you know, be healthier, um, try to get the lean burger, do the um, George Foreman grill where the fat comes off. If you're going to do the chicken thighs, make sure that that skin is super crispy because then you know all the oil's gotten out of it or most of it. Um, nutrition facts. These labels, um, the one thing you don't want to look at is sugar because that is fake. Do they even have on here? Yeah, they have the four grams of sugar, but they have 14 grams of carbohydrates. All these fillers, the food companies know that you're looking at the sugar. So they're gonna add um, dextrose and carrageenan gum and all these things that um, do raise our blood sugar, but it's not called sugar, so they don't have to put it on the list. So this is um, only a partial story. The sugars there that are one, um, four grams of sugar, that's in the carbohydrate. Those 14 grams includes the four, so you don't add them together. And we, we're looking for um, a meal that's about 15 to 45 grams of carbohydrates for um, maintaining your weight. Um, if you want to lose weight, you're going to be more on the 15 end of it. If you want to gain weight, well, you could do, I would gain weight with a protein, not with the carbohydrates that, you know, we don't need any more fat. It's anyway, that's what I'm, my idea is. Um, of course, nutrition label, <laughs> look at the serving sizes. You know, those little bags of um, Cheetos and things at the right of the counter. Look how many servings. It's supposed to be three and a half servings. I mean, I can eat that bag in five minutes. So no. So whatever it says, if it says three, you know, it's always going to say three and a half. It'll never say two. You can easily do the math for that. Three and a half. So if it has, um, say, 15 grams of carbs in those three and a half servings, you know, that's three times 15 is 45 plus another seven. So that's going to be a lot, right? So <laughs> So share those little tips or have them with a meal because um, look at, definitely look at the serving size. That's the one thing. Um, and then uh, look at the carbohydrates. Um, and then I try to look at the, the protein because like I said, we want to have, you know, for the whole meal and vegetables have pro a lot of protein in it. Um, vegetables, like if you, uh, what is the high vegetable protein? Uh, do you remember the, the vegetables that are high in protein? Broccoli. Yeah, broccoli and Brussels sprouts, asparagus, peas, spinach, collard greens. These, um, well, the spinach and collard greens, one cup cooked is the same thing as two eggs. And all the other ones cooked, one cup is one egg. That's how much protein is in these. And it's about seven or eight grams. So you're gonna get uh, protein from your vegetables. Um, every cup or half a cup of fruit has about two grams of protein in it. So you actually have some protein in your apples. Um, your, your grains, again, we said like a half a cup of grain, that is going to be about four grams. Um, and then, you know, if you're going to have this packaged food, <laughs> you know, a lot of times these packaged foods are fine if you add extra frozen broccoli or extra frozen whatever vegetable you like to it. Um, so this here says only two grams. So I don't know exactly what this food is, but you really, two grams of protein isn't very much. So, um, and the package servings per container is 32. That's a lot of servings. I don't know what this thing is. And each serving, um, sodium, it has 66 milligrams. I like to see things, um, yeah, 66 is fabulous, but uh, under 800 milligrams. Um, if you had a meal that was 800 milligrams of sodium and you had three meals a day, that's 2,400 milligrams. That's still the low sodium um, lifestyle. 
Um, some people want it to be under 500 um, because they're going to have snacks. And if you're going to have salted peanuts or you're going to have um, bread, bread has a lot of salt in it. It's disappointing because you don't think of, oh, salty bread. Mm, no, it's, it does pita and all that kind of thing. So, you know, sodium, you want it to be anywhere between 500 and 800 is fine. If it has 130, that's wonderful. If the flavor, you like it. Um, but again, I, I like you to do more, less convenience foods. I know that's a difficult thing to do, but we, I just don't want you all going to the store so many times. It is, and it's very expensive. And like I said, those food companies, they, their goal is to sell food, not for your health. Even though it's a granola bar, kind bar, whatever it is, they want you to love this thing so much that you have to have it every time you go to the grocery store. So they're going to put a little extra sweetening sweetener in it. It might be artificial sweetener. It might be some preservatives. It might be um, all these different chemicals that we can't pronounce right away. Um, they actually hurt your gut biome. So think about adding, if you're going to have one of these, say this is a granola bar. Oh, it's not, well, that would be about right. Granola bar having two grams of protein, maybe it doesn't have a lot of nuts. Um, you'll just know that um, uh, you're going to have that with, if you're going to have a granola bar, I would, I would still have it with maybe some grapes or some piece of cheese, you know, make it a hearty snack. If you're, if you're hungry and you need a snack, you didn't have a big enough breakfast or lunch. So the key is having a big breakfast and a big lunch and have hardly anything for dinner. So, um, yeah, so the nutrition facts label, it can give you some information, but like the first thing I look at is the carbs and the, um, the protein. Also look at the ingredients. And of course, the serving sizes. So whatever order you want, those four things are really important. Um, and if it has um, a gram or two of sodium or of uh, potassium, people with kidney disease look at potassium, sodium, a phosphorus, and maybe it has a gram or two, that is less than 1% of the whole thing. So they can put zero. So just so you know, and you know, those, for example, the chips, they'll say three and a half servings, or this one here says 32 servings. If you were to eat that whole container and it is one gram, you've got 32 grams of something, you know, whatever, you know, the sodium or the potassium or just something else to look at. <laughs> I'm sorry to give you the bad news. Sure, Emma. Well, I've been doing a lot of foods and I think I heard, I heard you talk about food. Do you think that takes away from, especially the vegetables? They she asked about the freezing if it takes away the nutrients and it actually saves them. So if they if uh, you make it and you freeze it that same you know within an hour of, of making it that will keep all those nutrients in there. Um, but if if you're like me and you get distracted, I know we had that for lunch and now it's seven o'clock. It's you know just vegetables or whatever. Yeah, chances are it's been sitting out too long and and it won't be as nutritious as it would have been if I had frozen it right away. Um, yeah, and, and honestly, when they pick the broccoli or the lettuce, or you're not going to get frozen lettuce, spinach. So frozen spinach, frozen peppers, frozen broccoli, um, edamame beans, whatever. If you were to buy them fresh, so they picked them, they put them on the truck, they wash them, they put them in the bag, then they put them on the other truck to go wherever. And then they, from there, they take it to the store trucks, and then the store trucks bring it to the store, and then they, you have it. Okay, so maybe that's two or three days. And then, so that's pretty quick. And then it's in the store. Do you think that, um, I don't think that the broccoli or any of those vegetables are completely wiped out every day. I think they might sit in the store for a while. And if you go to Whole Foods and some of those apples are $4 each, I can't imagine. Apples last a long time, but I, especially in Whole Foods, I just, there's such a big pile of tomatoes or broccoli or whatever it is. I got to think that it's sitting there for a couple of days. So that's the fresh vegetables. And with the frozen vegetables, they basically take the freezer trucks right out into the fields and they cut them down, they wash them, they put them in the bag and they freeze them. So within hours of leaving the ground, you know, this, their, their plant base or whatever, they are in a frozen bag. And once they're in a frozen bag, they're, they're to be kept um, for freezing is zero. It's not 32. So they keep everything at zero or below until it you know, gets to the store. Then in the, the store coolers, you've seen those guys fixing those coolers. They, they get checked every hour. They have in the back, they get checked every hour. So those coolers have to, the frozen ones have to be zero and the, the refrigerator ones have to be less than 40 because um, 40 degrees or higher, the, well, actually I think it's more like 45 degrees, but either way, the refrigerator in the store is gonna keep it, you know, hold it. So when you do buy a lot of frozen things, um, get those grocery bags that are thermal. 
Um, I have a couple of them. They don't last as long as the other ones, but put all your frozen and your cold stuff in there. So that way your frozen peas uh, keep your chicken cold, you know, because there might be traffic or I might go to Target or, you know, and, and I'm not home right away. So that way it will stay very cold and then I can put it in my freezer and it will be good. Um, yeah, look at your freezer at home. Uh, that's a big thing right now with the vaccine that's coming out for the um, first responders. This, what is it, 50,000 doses or something? Did you hear? It has to be kept not at zero, not at negative 50, like negative 100, negative 94. No, it's Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, negative 94 Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, because negative 100 Celsius is like negative 200 Fahrenheit. Yeah, Celsius zero is 32, you know. But negative 94, geez. Um, well, they're going to give it to the hospital workers and hopefully the grocery store workers because they are very, you know, those people are essential workers. And sorry, I'm out of my screen here, but the grocery store workers, they need to get the vaccine too. So, um, and it looks like it's 90% effective and, and Fauci loves it. Fauci loves it. So I'm loving it too. Well, it's not coming out until December, right? That's right. Well, and it's not going to last two weeks, but it could last um, three months to six months. They're not sure about it, but you have to get a, a vaccination and then they give you a card 28 days later, then you get to take a picture of it. You get the vaccination again. Now there's six different vaccinations that are on track to be approved. So um, this is just the first one. So we'll see how the other ones come, but yeah, you have to get it. And then 28 later, you get it again. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. And then they call me back a month later and I got the second shot. Yeah, yeah. And um, even when I would do a, a TB test, they would give you the TB and you have to be there within 72 hours. And I remember somebody scheduled me on, uh, on a Thursday. So I would have to come in on a Sunday. I'm like, why are you doing this on Thursday? I'm like, oh yeah, they, they fixed it. But your doctors are really busy. Be, be your own advocate, <laughs> you know, um, that is for sure. As a dietitian, I'm here for you. Give me a call, send me an email. What about that? But um, I, I love these classes and keep up with your questions. Every week, if you want to come and, and, and have, you know, a list of questions, I would love to answer it because, you know, this, this is nice, but whatever. Okay, so we talked about planning our meals around vegetables. We talked about the nutrition facts. Um, our life, we, we have a varied life. We're not sitting at a desk 24-7. I hope not. Um, so we have family celebrations pretty much every month. We have um, eating alone. That's, you know, uh, pretty much every night almost. We have our sick days. We have dinner parties and sporting events. So family celebrations, when you know you're getting together with family and typically this shows inside, but now we're gonna be in a park or something. Um, if we're still looking at our blood sugar or, or concerned about our weight, um, we're going to look at these family celebrations as you know there's going to be some alcohol there or some uh, sweet beverages and you know there's going to be um, things that you want to partake at the end. So try to either eat before you go or when you get there, have your meal before you take the, the drinks, um, whether it's going to be sweet tea or lemonade or beer or wine, uh, all those things are going to really shoot your blood sugar up fast. Bless you. So if um. If you do have bl low blood sugar, this is where you're really, really hungry. Um, yes, you can have um, uh, not chocolate, that has too much fat in it. It's gotta be like jelly beans, it's gotta be um, fruit snacks, it's gotta be, um, uh, what are some other things you would do? Oh, well, those uh, glucose tablets. Um, Ted, do you have some ideas? What else do you take? I always try to the glucose tablets are great. I like with a little bit of water, they're a little dry for me. <laughs> I'm chewing on that chalk and I'm already starving. Um, but the biggest thing that will rate, yeah, absolutely a soda that has sugar in it. So it's like, but it's only four ounces. So one of those little Cokes or um, one of those juice boxes, or if you have a lemonade in your house or a sweet tea in your house, just a half a cup and take a look at what time you drank that half a cup because you want to wait 15 minutes and see how you feel. And you might need another half a cup, but um but don't drink the whole thing because then your sugar will go, you're, you're just really low and you're like starving. You end up eating everything in the house and drinking the whole thing of lemonade. And now your sugar's up here and you feel sick like after Thanksgiving. So that's the thing. You got to look at your watch and wait the 15 minutes and see how, how you're doing. But um, low blood sugar is the worst. Um, I had it when I was pregnant several times and the confusion, you just feel sick and it's, 
you cannot recover from it. I find that it totally wrecks your whole day. So try to have a, a little something to eat in the morning when you wake up within two hours of getting out of bed. Um, try to have something midday. And then again, have something three to four hours before you go to bed. Um, if you're, if you're going to have dinner at five and you don't go to bed till one in the morning, you might need another snack around nine o'clock. And with a snack, we're going to have all the four food groups that might be apples and peanut butter. So the apples is the carbs and the fiber and the peanut butter is the protein and the fat. It might be cheese and crackers, same thing. The cheese would have the fat in it. Um, it could be some nuts and berries. It could be a yogurt with some berries because that's going to have some fat in it. Oh, watch out for the fat-free yogurts. Although we, I, and you were did talking about fat-free yogurts in Aldi's and I noticed there, it is just yogurt. They don't put the dextrose and all these other things in. Really, a lot of times though, the fat-free products add some kind of a dextrose, which is a sugar that increases our blood sugar. So even though it doesn't have fat, it still has the same or more calories. And it's a super carbohydrate now because there's no fat in it. How about um, Dark chocolate is delightful. <laughs> I love it. it. Has lots of antioxidants, um, but it does have a little bit too much fat. Even if you go with the 72. Now, if you can take the 80, 82 or the 95, God bless you. I, it's baking chocolate to me. But the 65 and the 50s, it's it's really it's wonderful having you know a square or two. Usually, um, uh, an ounce will be either a quarter of the bar or one square if it's a if it's a big. You know, but, but take a look at what, um, you know how you find out how much an ounce of dark chocolate is? That's a serving size. And it will say how many servings are in there. So if this bar is this long and there's four servings, you can have a quarter of it. And that is fine for, um, you know, your blood sugar. And, you know, it's just perks you up. There is something in chocolate that helps our body make some more dopamine um, and serotonin, which is the happy hormone. So, um, um, if you want to have a bar with some nuts, that's even better, but um, it doesn't have a lot of fiber in it. That's the only thing it's missing. It's got the carbohydrates. Oh, it doesn't have protein really either. So it's the carbohydrates and the fat. So if you wanted to have it, you know, after a meal, that would be lovely. If you're going to have it on an empty stomach, yeah, I'd have it with some cheese and crackers first or something or an apple and peanut butter and then have a piece. Um, but if you know you're going to have dinner soon, you could have it an hour before dinner and that I think it will still be fine. But um, I, there was some diabetes people who were saying no chocolate. No, <laughs> we, you know, it, 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 there's another woman, she loved Pepsi and she was a nurse and she just knew that just was a highlight of her day when she could have her Pepsi. And she only had it like three times a week, maybe, maybe two times. Um, it was under the stressful, well, this was back in February when the hospital was a little different, maybe in November a year ago. But um, I said, yeah, you know, these, this, this one shift is going to be really stressful. You know, you're going to want the Pepsi. So you're not going to have a hoagie for lunch. You're going to have a salad. You know, you're not going to have the bread and all of these things so that the Pepsi, you can, you like it. And she didn't like the diet Pepsi. And I'm glad because the diet Pepsi hurts your gut biome. So um, whatever is good in your life that gives you joy, we'll find ways to fit it into the, food, the four food groups and, and you can enjoy it. So let's see. Um, okay, so family celebrations are outside now. Um, you know there's gonna be some uh, sweet beverages or high carb beverages, um, just so we have a meal before, or again, vegetables and chicken, you know, that kind of thing. Um, dinner party, same thing, like uh, potlucks and stuff. Bring the food that you know you can eat so that you have a pretty decent um, start of your meal. And then you can add the other things. But uh, maybe that day um, you're going to do some exercise or drink more water. Um, but dinner parties, you know, try to bring something. And, and look for the foods that don't have so much potatoes and, and pasta and, and sweet things for them. You know, pick out the, the different kinds of salads and the roasted asparagus and all these different kinds of things now. Um, a lot of times, uh, if you're gonna bring a pasta dish, you can do it with, instead of a wheat pasta, you can use um, the red lentil pasta. That's very close. I actually like it. I, um, the wheat right now is different than it was when we were little. It used to be, it was about shoulder height. It took all summer for it to grow. And, um, and it was very complex and, you know, whole wheat bread would, when you were a kid and you had a whole wheat bread sandwich, you were full for the day. Now they can make whole wheat bread with um, 
uh, baking soda in about 15 minutes and they strip it. So yeah, it does have some of the fiber that it used to have. But the big thing is instead of being shoulder height, it grows uh, knee height and there's three crops a summer instead of one crop. So we think it's uh, rather immature. So it doesn't have the fiber that the taller one does and it doesn't have the protein. It, it just is a really simple carb. So um, I know a lot of people who are having trouble with um, wheat sensitivities. They get um, itchy skin or they get bloating or um, they just don't feel comfortable. So um, if you, you're not feeling comfortable, try knocking out the wheat. Try not, you know, having, um, you know, like I said, if you're gonna have pasta, do it with a red lentil pasta. If you're gonna have sandwiches, try the lettuce wraps. If you're gonna have um, uh, potatoes with a dish, substitute the, um, the cauliflower. If you're gonna have chips, try the, having the corn chips, um, all these kind of things instead of the pita chips or, you know, the, the, the wheat bread and all this. There's some gluten-free breads and gluten-free crackers now that are pretty good. Um, again, they're at Aldi's, <laughs> my favorite cheap store. Um, and the biggest thing with going to the store now, take a look at what time those stores close and go a half an hour or an hour before they close. Hardly anybody's there. And the help is like, let's get these people out of here. They're all there to help you. Oh, I can't find the sunflower seeds. Oh, it's right there. They get it for you. You're out a lot faster. And again, um, there's hardly anybody there. The only thing is uh, Trader Joe's and Aldi's close at eight. That's really early. We're giant and the other ones close around 11. So yeah, so go across the street to Aldi on 309. <laughs> uh, very, I have never seen, no, I have absolutely seen Aldi busy and it's been around lunchtime. But if you go, you know, like I said, just before it closes, um, they open, I think, around nine. So if you get there first thing in the morning, you know, it's really clean and always have the hand sanitizer in your purse. So when you either get on the bus or get in the car, <laughs> you're clean from that store. But um, eating alone, uh, make yourself a plate and then take it to the TV or your magazine or whatever that you're doing um, and or your, maybe audio books. A lot of people are listening to audio books. But if you can make your plate first instead of making a big pot of something. And you know, that was supposed to be four servings and you're gonna put it in the freezer and then you're gonna have it later. Somebody ate all my servings. <laughs> How many times have I, I, there's been a few times when I'm, I, you know, I have uh, potato chips or, you know, maybe corn chips or whatever with some salsa. And I sit down and I'm gonna watch this show and my husband's with me and then I, I have a chip and then I look and there's no more chips. I'm like, honey, you just ate all my chips. He goes, I didn't have a single one. <laughs> like, oh, thank goodness I had the bowl there. I did not realize I ate all of them. So, um, you know, have, make your plate. If you're going to have the chips with the TV show, have it in a bowl that, you know, this is how much I want to have. Um, and then the sick days. If you are on some diabetes medicine, whether you're sick or you just ate cake or you broke your leg, your sugar is elevated. So keep taking your medicine, um, whether it's metformin or if it's Jardians or all of these things, um, it's not gonna cause you low blood sugar. It's gonna bring your sick uh, blood sugar down into the normal range. So um, sick days and also drink water. Uh, sometimes you have a stomach, uh, upset stomach and you can't really drink anything. But if you can even just get a half a cup more water you can drink when you're sick, the more um, your kidneys can filter out all that extra sugar. Um, that's how those floxin medicines work. Um, like Jardians, I can't remember all the names. I have to, a cheat sheet that I, I study with, but basically, um, okay, and then the sporting events. If you get Eagles tickets and you're gonna go, the Eagles, um, that, that place, uh, they do have some pretty good meals. Uh, you can get, uh, um, you know, a meat with a vegetable, a, you know, grilled stuff on your sausage, whatever. They have some pretty good uh, menus. But um, the, the flyers and the, um, the basketball, the Sixers, uh, no. <laughs> it's going to be uh, bread pizza. It's going to be really big hoagies, lots of bread, hardly anything. There's nothing good to eat at a lot of these sporting events. So I know that you're going to be there for a long time if you're tailgating. Again, bring something with sausage and vegetables and stuff that you can uh, tailgate with. And just know that once you get in there, generally, it's it's not a good choice. The other thing is, yeah, the, the link is great, but um, they do have good choices. But I, I think a burger is like $19. So, <laughs> so yes, you can get some good food, but I really recommend um, eating beforehand. You know those football players are wealthy. You're you're not given to charity by taking that nineteen hundred dollar hamburger. So um, you know sporting events are really fun. Whether you're um, you know down at the union, seeing the soccer, or you know even if you're seeing with um, 
you know, your family, if your nieces or nephews or grandkids or whatever are playing sports, um, if it's going to be a long, you know, playoff, you're there all day, you know, bring good food for yourself. Think about your food. I, I hate to say this, but whether you have diabetes or a weight problem, um, the, the convenience food just is not uh, as nutritious and healthy. And a lot of it will make you want more. Carbs always are going to want more carbs. That's why I said, if you're hungry, don't have a lollipop. You're going to want five more lollipops. You know, I know people who have the little mint things. And I said, oh, a mint thing after lunch. That's nice. I could probably eat two or three of those a day. How many do you have? This one, my one client, she eats 14 a day. <laughs> like, and that's not her fault. That's how that candy is designed. They want you to have 14 a day. You know, they sell it in a bag, you have a bunch of them. So um, we've got all of these things. Oh, oh, Greasy's Burger Joint. Now this is where we're talking about the grease and the first thing from your blood vessel, where does it go? Right into those insulin receptors. So if you're gonna have the pizza, if your friends are going out and you wanna go out too, you go out with them. But just know that this is gonna be a greasy meal. You're gonna try to drink more of the um, unsweetened tea, put some lemon and stuff in it or um, you know, the seltzer water or whatever you're going to drink, but I'm um, trying not to have sugar in your drink and try to, you know, when the pizza comes, put the napkin on it and soak up or fold it in half, and let it drain. <laughs> um, the hamburger, again, get lettuce and tomato, onion, and as many vegetables as you can and, you know, squish it so that all the grease goes into the bun, maybe take the top off and eat it with a fork, something like this, but just know that grease just extends your meal. So instead of absorbing it all in like an hour and a half or two, you're absorbing it over like four or five hours. And that, that's hard on your body. So eating out again, I, I want you to be with your friends right now. Um, I, well, now you don't eat inside, you're eating on the street. <laughs> um, yeah, Ambler has been having um, a, a restaurant week every month. Um, we used to have it, um, when do we have restaurant week? We have it in January because people don't go out in January and we would have it in um, late July because everybody's away. So um, we had the Corona um, quarantine and it was March and it was April, uh, May. They had, uh, um, you know, coming out, eating street, Butler Pike. And I was surprised and a few people were out and, and they had it so that you can walk down the center of the street. You wouldn't be, you know, without a if you didn't have a mask on and people are eating without a mask on, you're still like 10 feet apart. So it was, it was nice the way they had it. Um, and so that was May and then June they had it and that was very busy. Um, I was surprised. Matter of fact, we didn't eat out. We took, we took the food and we went, went back home. And same thing with July and August, I think September they had one and, and there's a place called uh, Gypsy Blue and you can eat on the porch. Uh, which is up on the second level. So if you're going to go out, see if you can get up onto the second level where you look over everybody. Usually, you know, it's outside and you, you get the wind and everything. Um, but it, it's all about the breath. And if you're, and, and think about it, like if somebody's smoking a cigarette, how close do you need to be to smell that cigarette? Cheyenne, if you're smoking, I think I could smell it. So that's why we're this far apart and I got the windows open. We have this little um, air purifier. And then after we leave, she goes around with this blue light that blinks and it would hurt our eyes if we were in here, you know, so she has these and it just kills it's ultraviolet light killing stuff. So it's wonderful. So that's why, you know, it's all pretty sterilized. Um, the last thing we have is Mike's Bar and Grill with the alcohol. Um, so the well, actually we've got the farmer's market here. So the alcohol, um, the alcohol is people think that it's a carbohydrate. It actually is a toxin. Um, men are lucky they have three times what a woman has. It's called alcohol dehydrogenase. It's this hormone that helps you break down alcohol. And like I said, women have a little bit of it. So uh, men can have three beers and walk around. Women, three beers, we're pretty much on the floor. So um, watch out for the alcohol and just know, try to have it with a meal. If you're going to a celebration, somebody's going to be a glass of champagne you haven't eaten all day try to have some cheese and crackers before, or, you know, have your lunch before your, or your dinner before you're going to be into that. Um, and that way the um, toxin is diluted from the food in your stomach and it won't give you that um, stress from your body having the toxin. Um, of course, most alcohol has um, mixers with it. Who wants a margarita that doesn't have the mixer? So know that that mixer is like drinking a glass of soda, you know, 
but again, if you have it with a meal and you're active and you're drinking water between your drinks, that's another idea. You know, if you like rum and Coke, then the next one's going to be water and the next one's going to be a rum and Coke and the next one's going to be water. And I think you're about done, but if you got to have another one, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, after or during, you know, have a little bit of vegetables and protein first. And that will be that protein and the fiber and the, and the, the fat that will help dilute that uh, toxin of the alcohol. Um, but, you know, these alcohol beverages, they're, they're delicious. I'm, I'm not poo-pooing that at all. Just that, that, yeah. So in our bodies, when our, when our bodies are stressed, you know, it raises our blood sugar, whether we have diabetes or not. And, and when your body has that toxin in it, you know, it just causes a stress. But the other thing, oh, yeah, we don't have that on here. But there's, there's several ways that our blood sugar can go up, whether you have diabetes or not. And, you know, of course, it's eating cake or some carbohydrates. Um, it's stress, like you're in traffic and, and nobody's going and you got to get there or somebody's yelling at you or you were supposed to do this and, and they did that and it's all messed everything up and you're stressed. Um, taking some medicines, uh, steroids and things will increase your blood sugar. Um, alcohol increases your blood sugar. I'm not getting enough sleep. And waking up in the morning and not having anything to eat for over two hours, your body thinks, oh my God, we're going to starve to death, of course. And um, it raises your blood sugar for you. Just for an example, I had to give blood, not give blood, had a blood test. And I really had to do it this Monday before my doctor's appointment on Friday. And the only point time that I could get it was at 12.15. Uh, I'm thinking 12.15. And I had to go to work. So work was a little stressful. I got everything taken care of. I get there at 1215. They're closed. And it says we will be back at 1245. And there were some other people there and like, oh, yeah, they do this and they'll be back. So I was there for a half an hour. And you know, I was not smiling. I was a little grumpy and I was a little bit mad. And yeah, my blood sugar came back. It was like 120. And I don't have diabetes. And the, my doctor was like, oh, my, your blood sugar is really elevated. And I'm like, yeah, I was mad. I was hungry. You got to get it. Like, yeah, if you're going to wake up at eight, then you need an appointment before 10, <laughs> not at quarter of one. <laughs> and uh, and I, I was able to wear um, a continuous glucose monitor, a little Dexcom. So I, this is why I'm telling you this, because I've seen it happen and I don't have diabetes. I, I can have low blood sugar. I get a little too hyper and whatever. So I, I know that that's really bad, but um yeah, the, the fats really make a big difference in your blood sugar and, um, and being mad. <laughs> but I will say, it also happy, like if you're excited, if you're excited about stuff, um, you know, your football team is winning and you're cheering and oh, guess what, your sugar's up too. Because um, I found when I wore this for, I think, one class while I was teaching it. And yeah, during the class, my sugar was elevated, you know, so I was excited. I don't know. Um, so we got uh, Mike's Bar and Grill with the alcohol, and then we have the, um, the farmer's market here. So carbohydrate-wise, we are looking at starches, of course, the popcorn, the donuts, the bread, um, the grains, uh, the pasta, of course. That's a carbohydrate. Fruits, yep, that's a carbohydrate. Um, this is The fruits are going to have more fiber. Um, the vegetables is also a carbohydrate. It's going to have a lot more fiber. Um, pears are a lot of fiber, nine grams in a pear, uh, four or five grams in an apple. So um, we need 10 grams per meal. So those are, are very good. Um, berries, again, almost 10 grams per, um, no. I, if it's raspberries or blackberries, you're not going to eat a whole cup of that. Um, but, you know, four or five grams, you know, that's, that's good for the, the fruits. Um, the melons and the grapes, they don't have a lot of fiber and they have a lot of water in them. So they don't have a lot of carbs. So the berries, the melons, you know, watermelon and, and uh, honeydew and stuff and the grapes. Um, to have enough grapes that you have 15 grams of carbs to bring your sugar up if you have a low blood sugar, 17 grapes. It's like a cup and a half. So the grapes don't have a lot of carbohydrates in them. So don't try to do that. That's a lot. Um, milk, uh, whether it's soy milk or cow's milk, 50-50 uh, carbs and protein. So um, same thing with beans and yogurt, um, hummus, 50-50, uh, half protein, half carbs. Um, when you get to almond milk, although almonds have tons of protein, there's no protein in almond milk. So it's 100% carbs, whether it's um, almond milk, um, nut milk, what is it? oat milk, uh, uh, coconut milk, they have no protein in them. So when you do that, it's like putting juice on your cereal or putting juice in your oatmeal. 
it's, it's the same thing. Um, but, but there is um, an oat, uh, almond milk that's only 30 calories. So if you're making a smoothie and you don't want to add water, almond milk is nice and vanilla is delicious. Um, it, 30 calories, you know, I think it's like seven grams of carbs. No, that's um, the almond milk. Soy milk is, um, is a lot like cow's milk. Um, they're both about 100 calories in a cup. And they're, uh, I think cow's milk has maybe 10, no, eight grams of protein, where soy milk has like six or eight, depending. So soy milk has a little bit less protein than a cow's milk. But um, most people I talk to are lactose intolerant. You know, they have to go to the bathroom after ice cream or a milkshake or stuff like that. It upsets their stomach. So um, soy milk now, they've done a lot of research. Um, uh, soy can be a big GMO, okay? So they have modified it with other animals to make the soy last like they do with corn and they don't GMO wheat, they hybridize that one. But so we don't wanna have um, just any old soy milk. Take, try to look for the one that's organic because um, it's not that the GMO is a problem, it's a GMO for weeds. I know this sounds crazy, but basically, have you seen uh, a, a soy field and it's beautiful and green and it's a nice rectangle? And then in one day, it will be completely gray and brown. They put a desiccant on it and they kill everything. Uh, so, you know, carbohydrates and fiber, proteins and fat. And you can find them all at the farmer's market. And I don't, the, the clock is right there and I'm not even paying attention. Yeah. Say, hey, lady, it's a 10 of one. We should get up and move around. Um, the biggest thing is um, everybody's body is different. You know what makes you gain weight, make, what, what makes your hands swollen. You know, that's excess water, excess sodium. So um, take care, you know, watch your body and see what affects you. And, um, oh, I have a whole bunch of pages there about how to incorporate vegetables in your diet. So, yeah, help yourself. And... Um,